Thank you. Four friends all injured standing at the marathon finish line last year, but instead of wallowing or focusing on themselves, they're rallying around a fifth friend who was hurt the worst, the best way they know how, and they found a way to support her by doing what she used to love doing best, and that is running. Our Heather Hedges with their story. And since that day, you know, we've really bonded and, and become close. Their the enthusiasm for life is day, contagious. It's <laughs> nothing short of remarkable. They can be so upbeat when you consider what they've been through this past year. Or maybe that's why they're this way. Just appreciative to be alive. You know, the struggles that we've all gone through with PTSD and... Last year, these four young women stood at the marathon finish line in front of Forum, cheering on friends. And this photograph, taken a minute before the second bomb went off, shows just how close the four friends stood to danger. We were all kind of standing together, lined up, you know, kind of shoulder to shoulder. The brunette in black with the sunglasses is 38-year-old Sabrina Della Russo. And I'm actually propped up right behind the mailbox, so I was probably about five feet from the explosion. Sabrina, Alyssa Ward, Megan Lawrence, and Jenna Diedzik all suffered traumatic brain injuries from the sheer force of the explosion, knocking them to the ground and literally rattling their brains inside their skulls. And the deafening sound of the explosion, reportedly similar to the volume level of a space shuttle launch, has left these 30-somethings with serious hearing loss. I lost uh, the majority of my eardrum. It's like having a fluorescent lamp next to your ear constantly. It was extremely difficult right after the marathon because it was kind of a constant reminder of what had happened. Um, and there's no known cure for it medically, um, but I'm learning to cope with it and not have it be a negative trigger. And then there's the girl's mutual friend, Roseanne Sedoya. You can clearly see Roseanne in the same photo, in the gray shirt leaning over the barricade. Directly behind her in the white hat, accused bomber Joe Harsarnaev. Roseanne just happened to be standing two feet closer to the bomb than the rest of the girls. Just two measly feet, in this case, would mean the difference between keeping limbs and losing them. And all of a sudden, to my left, um, the first bomb went off. And in my head, I was kind of saying this was an unusual situation. They'd never had any sort of celebratory type cannons in the past years that I've gone. And then a gentleman to my right started to yell to get into the street. And I kind of did a quick, cal quick calculation in my head that I was too short to really get over the barriers that they had separating the spectators from the street. And so I pretty much just decided to turn and run. And so I turned to my right to run away and I ended up running right into the second bomb. I had undergone um, I believe two surgeries to my leg, a surgery to my abdomen, and a surgery to my left leg. Uh, and then on Tuesday afternoon, they brought me out of, um, I guess, an, in, uh, an induced coma um, to let me know, you know, what had happened and um, had actually told me that they had amputated. Um, sorry. Roseanne is alive, but her right leg had to be amputated above her knee. It was an especially devastating blow because she loved to run, especially in charity races. In fact, she's the one who got the other girls into running. She pushed me. She kept telling me that I could do it, even though I had never really run before in my life. And she was always an advocate for, come on, let's sign up, let's do this, or, you know, they have free beer after this one. Or And the day before last year's marathon, Row and two of the girls ran the Boston Athletic Association's 5K, one of the pre-marathon events. It would be the last time Row would run on her own two feet. You know, Roseanne finished first, as she always does. And it's left the other girls with feelings of guilt, anger, and confusion. Why of all people did this have to happen to Row, The one in their group who loved being active, who loved pushing her body to its fullest potential. It's also shattered their sense of security the hypervigilance that feels now like it will never go away, being startled at the slightest of noises. But Sabrina, Alyssa, Megan, and Jenna have made a decision to stare fear right in the face. Not only are they going to return to the grounds of this year's marathon, they're running. I'm scared. 
I'm nervous. I just want her to be able to build from some of the strength that we might have. They call their team running for row. Alyssa and Jenna will run the 5K, Megan and Sabrina the full marathon. And all of the money they raise will go right back to Roseanne to help with her medical bills. It will be bittersweet knowing Row should really be the one leading the pack. Still, it's a way they can help Row continue her passion until she can run again. Because I know, I know she'll be back there running with us. I have no doubt about that whatsoever. We're here for her. That's yeah. it. There's, you know, we can't change the past, but we can try and make the future better than what happened. I mean, I have my ups and downs, good days, bad days, um, days that my limb aches, depending on how much walking I do. And um, I'm in the process of really trying to desensitize the end of that limb so that I can kind of get back to doing what I used to do and, and back to, I guess, a new normal. When the girls do cross the finish line on Marathon Monday, Roseanne's not sure if she'll be able to be there with them, but she has been with them every step of the way throughout this journey. In South Boston, I'm Heather Hedges, Fox 25 News.